right. So what would it mean to be flat? What would it mean to not bend? Well, if we do the, these, we know these matrices end up turning into all the folds. So the ant, if, if it goes in a circle on that folded thing, what should happen? It should end up back where it started. Back where it started in matrix form is called the identity <coughs> matrix. So its our, um, a rigid fold, um, if a rigid fold, then um, you get ln times ln minus 1 times all the way down to L1 should be your identity matrix. And if you work out what these um, chi i's end up doing, it's chi 1, this is equivalent to saying the product of the chi i's is also that identity matrix. So if you have a linear algebra, multiply it by the identity matrix is like multiplying by 1. If you do all your steps, if you tell your aunt this is the steps you're taking, and it gets back to where it started, that means that's pretty good. It means all the distances, well, it means it, it's possible that all the distances were okay. That nothing got stretched. Okay. So this is one way to represent this. Now there's some deficiencies in this model. What we have so far just tells us that it's that the end result is flat. Maybe we can't get there with, being, with flat folds. So we can parameterize and do all that. There's another problem. So I'm going to change the texture. All right, so I've deleted the line that's vertical. And I'm going to put in a diagonal line here. Um, this is now going to be a pi angle. This is also, this is gone. This is a 7 pi fourths uh, pi. You work with the matrices here, it's going to come out to the identity. It's going to say, okay, this is flat. There's a problem here. All right, so here's the folded version. There's a problem because I had to cut this. It self intersects. The flap down here has to connect with one of the ones up here. You, you got something in between. Um, yeah, was it that one? All right. Uh, no, this is the one underneath. I put a little slit in it so it's hard to tell. This one is underneath. It has to connect to something on top, but you've got a, let, you've got a piece of paper in between. That's hard to deal with, isn't it? I need to get to point A to, from point A to point B but there's a piece of paper in the way. Okay? So this is cut up because you can't actually fold it in three space. You'll notice that there's a notch in here. This one is really supposed to be all the way across, but I can't do that. Okay, so I'll pass this over. Right. So what's a new what's a new way of doing a different way of doing this? <coughs> so um, that was the matrix model we just talked about. What's another way of doing this? If the um, hyperbolic paraboloids can, can come forward, that would be really helpful. All right. So, I assume you've played with a compass before. What's, what does a compass do? Tells so it always points what direction? North, okay. But I have a special compass. It's a, it's a Gauss compass. For gas curvature, that we're going to talk about. It doesn't point north. It points up. Okay? So I have a compass. It's a special compass. It always points up. I wrote the cube. All right, if I'm on the cube, it depends on which side, what direction the compass points. When I'm on top, it points this way. When I'm on this side, it points that way. When I'm on this side, it points this way. When I'm on the bottom, it points down. So it's, it's, the, it's a compass that always points up. What? Or out. Yes. All right. So, uh, let's start with a flat piece of paper. You're walking around on a flat piece of paper. What direction is your Gauss compass pointing? Up. Up. It's always pointing up. <coughs> No matter what it points to, 
points up. Okay. Now I can do things to this, uh, but let's let's talk about some various things though. All right. I could transform these up vectors into onto a sphere. So if I take a sphere, take that center of the sphere, it's always pointing up. Okay? If I were to walk a small circle over here, okay, then if I map the same thing over here, I just I don't even get a circle, I just get a point. So if I, um, if I do area in the sphere over the area on the surface, all right, and I'm going to say as a limit, I'm going to actually take a limit, I want the, uh, the area to go to zero. All right. If I do this for a flat piece of paper, I'm going to get zero as my answer all the time. All right? This is called the curvature. Okay? Um, or it's Gaussian curvature. This is an extrinsic way of looking at it. <coughs> all right? So um, the, if I fold the paper, it actually pres and I do it rigidly just to bend, it preserves this. The area is still, the limit is still zero. But now let's talk about something else. So we're going to talk about these hyperbolic parabolas. Okay. These are not rigid folds. They're impossible to be rigid folds. This one is made out of cardstock. It's really tough material. It's so tough material that when I tried to fold this, I ripped it. So if you look in the center, it's actually ripped. I couldn't, the paper was so unhappy with having to stretch, it had to rip. Okay, so um, pass this around so you can see the rip in the center. I also have an example here. So I took another one of these hyperbolic parabolas and I put pins in it, and these pins point up for the surface. And then I took the up direction and I pl pl plopped them into a sphere. If you notice. On the, I'm going to pass this around. On the hyperbolic paraboloid, it goes around in one direction. On the sphere, it's going around in the other direction. So what ends up happening is this formula comes out to be a negative number instead of zero because it's the wrong direction. So that's one way to check that this is not a rigid fold. Okay. So the moral of this technique is it could be really useful, but it's really hard to compute. What you have to do is if it's rigid, nothing should be stretched. Stretching would show up by having a non-zero curvature. Okay? So if it doesn't stretch, it should always have a zero curvature, it should be flat. Something like the hyperbolic paraboloid, the pins on there are color-coded, so if you line them up, you'll start to see that they're not, that one is going one way and one's going the other way. If you get a non-zero value here, then um, you know it's not a flat fold. All right. So you can do this computation. It's awful, but it can be done. Okay. So you know, for a for a four valent vertex, you could actually do a computation and figure out is it flat or not. It's a really hard computation. Really hard. Spherical geometry and the computations are not pretty. Okay. So I, so the moral here is that this model could detect if it's flat or not really hard. Okay. So I'm just about to end. Um, one. Did you talk about how you put those pins in the middle? <laughs> because I did it right. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I, I, uh, I, I looked at it and thought about it and put the pins in. <laughs> that's what I did. Uh, so, uh, uh, lastly, I'm going to put a plug in for um, a video. That, this is actually mine. This is called Between the Folds. Um, it was a PBS show last year, two years ago. 
Anyway, it's about mathematical origami. It's got a lot of the people that I talked about on here. I think Tom Hull's on here. Eric is definitely on here. Robert Lang. Um, there's a lot of people on here. If you wanted to borrow it, or even if you wanted to show it, I'm cool with that. Um, and I'm going to put one last tiny tidbit in for all the other racists in the room. So, if you, so in origami, if you look at what's constructible, it's constructible by towers of degree two and degree three. All right, so that was applied for the algebraicists. Okay, so degree two and degree three extensions. All right, that's the end of my talk. You are all required to stick around and <laughs> help me fold a dodecahedron. What we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna give you some precise instructions. I got them printed out here. You're gonna, each person's gonna sign, make one or two. You're gonna sign it and we're gonna put it all together and then we're gonna display it in the department. And before we do that, let's take a moment to thank our speaker. Sure. Any questions? Everyone wants to get to the poll. <laughs> All right. So, um,